the turtles weren't the only ones sleeping in sewers. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. Eastman and Lair's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Triceraton Zog. Zog is one of the three Triceratons that were transported to Earth by the Utrons in the Techno-Cosmic Research Institute. After escaping the destruction of the TCRI building, Zog fled to the sewers where he lived for about a year. Deprived of his natural atmosphere, his brain decayed over this time, causing him to mistake Raphael for a superior Triceraton officer when he ran into him in the sewers. Zog may have a fleeting memory, but the person behind the camera doesn't. The first thing I want to remember to do is thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mirage Comics Triceraton Zog. We can have a look at this review. I'm going to bring in also the other figures where we've left off so far, but in the meantime, though, something else I don't want to forget is to see how tall the figure stands. Measuring right to the very top of his crest, Triceraton Zog stands about, about seven and a half, maybe about even seven three quarters of an inch in height or the figure's almost 20 centimeters tall. I didn't even need to tie a string around my finger either. Here's what the figure looks like along with the Jim Lawson Raphael. Here's what the figure looks like with the original Mirage Comics Leonardo. Here's what the figure also looks like with the Turtle cartoon version of Triceraton. And we just recently also had a look at him. Here's also what he looks like with the Mirage Comics Splinter. Despite really the amount of plastic that was put into building this guy in the first place, I'm surprised to see that he comes with as much as he does. Mostly interchangeable hands take up the majority of his package filling, but then of course the Triceraton Zog also comes in clue with like grenades, for example. He does technically also come in clue with a tail. I've already taken the liberty of installing that. I'll show you guys how that works in a second, but in the meantime though, he does come with a couple of grenades. The grenades painted in brown does have a couple of stripes in a lighter brown. There doesn't seem to be a place that I can see, at least, picking up the figure and flipping it around where you can actually store said uh, grenades. There wouldn't have been a clip. There wouldn't have been a section maybe on the pockets anywhere where you'd be able to store this. Also on his bandolier would be sculpted right to this torso. So there's no real chance of displaying them other than just in his hands. The figure also comes with what either is a flash grenade or a gas grenade. I'm willing to think it's the second. It's molded and colored in about the same kind of plastic and paint as the regular grenades, just a little bit longer. Still, there isn't seem to be a place, at least, that you can store this on the figure. The figure also comes included with a very large knife. Very large, very dangerous. Not dangerous to me, at least. I can easily run my... <sighs> no, no, we could stop doing that. Easily run my finger across it. It's not going to draw any blood. It's a fairly thick plastic. It does have a little bit of give to it, so if you're worried about things like this to break... I don't think you're going to worry as much. Although, if you're going to go crazy with it, yes, that would likely break. You can see it does have a few spikes there on the end of the guard and painted nicely in the inside, but given it like a chestnut brown. It does fit into his hand, although cheatedly, I did swap out one of the hands. I know that's not really a word. I did swap out one of the hands so at least he'd have the means to store the or hold the knife. The knife doesn't hold, almost dropped it. The knife doesn't hold, I should say, as maybe well as I would hope kind of get it wedged in there and I guess if you have it in the right angle he holds the knife fine if you have it just off keltered a little bit then the knife obviously obviously will sit a little more wonkier uh, the figure also comes in clue with a triceraton blaster boy I like the look of this one it's colored not quite in the same gray as what we get to the blade the blade is a little bit more of a grayish color this kind of is a slightly more bluish tint you can see that the handle has been given a little bit of extra blue as well as the little knobs on the end of this and there is also a slightly softer plastic that they use for the strap the strap though isn't long enough obviously to fit around his shoulders no means to do that but at least the figure does have again the means to be stored in his hand i don't know how you would really store this i guess you would more so do it from the end here as that being obviously the handle and he doesn't have unfortunately the means just by the sizing of his arms to really be able to hold the blaster in both his hands but he does have at least this way of holding the blaster you wouldn't be able to hold the end of it just because again like his arms wouldn't be able to get that close together now i did already say i had a little bit of assembly that was required when you get this guy to the packaging like the cartoon version triceraton we looked at before you do have to install the tail the tail though is quite large 
and it simply just plugs in place. You can see it has a very long post peg and it fits right then into probably in the worst places that you'd have to put in something like this. It just plugs into his behind. There is a hinge joint right here that allows the tail to move back and forth, but he does have surprisingly an actual wire frame in the tail so you can bend it. I don't know what mileage you'll get from actually bending the tail if that may cause potential stress marks maybe in the plastic itself but it does certainly help to stabilize him with so much weight going into the plastic body that he has the figure is very prone to kind of leaning backwards and the tail does do a great job of kind of holding him in place until you decide how you want to have the figure displayed technically though the figure does have peggles in the undersides of his feet check 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 so if you did want to use yourself a display stand you certainly could use yourself a display stand then moving on to the hands that look like they belong to the thing the hands themselves are rough and coarse, and they all have cool texturing to them. They're molded here in sort of a caramel brown, and you can see like the panel line, the areas around the fingernails. It looks like just like it was pulled out of the pages. And now it might be something that sounds so drawn out here in these reviews that I keep com always commenting the same thing, but they do look like they were pulled from the pages. Just again, like a little coarser here. That figure also does have gripping hands. So again, if you wanted to have him, for example, maybe holding like the blaster, you could also have that as an option available as well. And he has also a little slightly smaller grip possibly for even holding the blade of the sword, now the blade of the knife. But to be honest, like to get that in there, you'd have to really fight it. You can see there's enough of a space, I'm, I suppose, if you were to heat this in hot water, you'd probably be able to move the pointer away from the thumb and then again, get him to hold the knife a little bit better that way. But to be all honest, the hand that he has right now, the one I so cheatingly swapped out earlier into this review, I think is easily able to hold this, the knife and the, the gun without having to swap out to these hands instead. Then the figure also comes include some relaxed hands also, which would technically have belonged to this side had I not already cheatingly. I know that's not even a word. We're just going to keep running with it. Had I not just swapped it out already, this hand would have normally had a home over on this side of the figure's body. That makes up the majority of the figure's accessories. Now picking up those Zog. Love the look of this figure, and it might very well be one of my favorite figures we've looked at lately. And that's really hard to say, but considering that we've already looked at the Lawson 4-pack of Turtles, and now we've just recently had a look at Master Splinter. That's a pretty high standard to meet. And yet, I really like the look of Zog. He's not perhaps as heavy as you may imagine. You may pick this guy up right away and kind of be alarmed by... He's a little lighter, and maybe some of it has to do with... Maybe they've used a hollow plastic, maybe for the body, for example... The legs do feel like they're good, chunky, heavy plastic, as well as the arms, as well as obviously the head. The head, though, is fantastic. I'm not just also saying that by the fact that I, well, Triceratops was always my favorite childhood dinosaur. And I think it looks really good, though. All the way around, it's finished from front to back. And even things like on the back of it, where you normally would not have the, the crest displayed, unless you obviously display the figure like that, would make no sense whatsoever. You can see how much work NECA has actually put to the back of it. Talented artists, talented painters, talented sculptors have all put into their time to give us something that looks like this. It sort of does look a little bit like the, the trunk or hide of a tree. Would trees have hides? I guess they wouldn't. They would have bark. It does certainly have almost more of like a tree bark-like texturing to it. They've colored it in different shades of brown. They've added a little bit of black also there as well. One thing I also really like while not banging the camera is that they've outlined the areas of his eyes so it's very easily able to see his eyeballs. And then they've also taken the time to put in an articulated jaw so you can open and close it. The jaw on mine is a little on the looser side, but once you get to about that point, it doesn't move at all. It's sort of the point in between that gets a little on the loosey-goosey side, but on the inside you can see that they've sculpted and painted so nicely a little tongue. It looks like, by the way, they've sculpted a tongue that he's screaming. Would a Triceratops scream, shriek? I, I don't I don't really know. But what I do know, though, is that's a really fantastic looking head sculpt. From there down, you get yourself a darker purple that they would have used for his Triceraton outfit. There's some rips, there's some tears, a little triangular symbol there also as well, a bandolier, and some really nice additional panel lining that they've added in there as well. This symbol does also carry over to the side that he has a Triceraton tattoo, Mixed amongst, again, like the foliage of the really nice sculpting that they put to the shoulders, the biceps, the forearms. And then you've got some torn off sleeves here that he has what I guess would be left of what would have been his shirt. It's just all in all a nice looking figure. It's one of those figures where I could pick this up and spend a lot of time just 
moving him around. And I'm only hoping that the review is doing it proper justice of just how good this figure looks in hand. He does have, of course, the belt that has multiple pockets. The pockets seem to be of different shapes, about the same sort of shape, but different sizes. You can see that they've outlined these nicely also as well. It's a... I again, to not sound like a broken record, it's just a really great looking figure. Nice panel lining added in there as well. A few little rips and holes and stuff like that in his outfit. And of course, down below there, we've also got the torn off lower half of his pants, exposing then down below his Triceraton feet, which already mentioned does have peg hole means under the undersides of his feet. So again, if you want to use yourself a display stand, either that or again, just bring the tail down. And that certainly helps to sort of stabilize the figure, serving then as a third tripod leg. For the figure's articulation, getting back to that right now, the figure head sculpt, surprisingly, for me at least, moved a lot better than I expected it to be. I mean, it can move up, it can move down, and move back and forth as well. And of course, we've already established the fact the figure does have an open and closed jaw, so that's nice to see as well. Figure's arms move forward and back, obviously, but you can also move it out. Not quite, I would say, at 90 degrees, but a little less than that. If 90 was right here, what would this be? Like 75, 70, 75? Figure does have a bicep swivel. Figure possesses only a single hinge in the elbow, which marks the one other thing that's kind of loose on this figure. It's just a little bit looseness here in the elbow, but it's not loose to the point where the figure has any problems to stand. If it was loose down here, that would be a different thing altogether. He only seems to be just a little bit loose here in the, in the elbow area. Hands rotate back and forth. There's also a hinge there as well. The figure has an upper torso ball joint. I thought for a second it might have actually been hinged right there, but that's actually just the panel lining fooling my eyes. In actual fact, he has a ball joint right here, right below, I guess, the belt line right here. The legs do also split out. They seem to be on hinge joints, really large ball joints, in fact. You can take the legs and move them forward. There goes the tail. You can take the legs and move them forward. You can move them back. He has a mild swivel, obviously, at the top of the thigh. A single hinge only on the knee, which allows at least the lower leg to rotate. He has an ankle pivot back and forth this way. You can also hinge the ankles up and down, which is the only thing I talked about looseness here in the elbow, but this section of his ankle is the only thing that's a little on the tighter side for Zog here, but that's not something I can't simply fix. Speaking of fixing, let's go ahead and pop the tail back into place. And boy, oh boy, I like the look of this guy quite a lot. Consistently, it seems, I'm sure, like a broken record here on this channel as of late when we looked at the NECA Toys Mirage-inspired turtles. I've really been liking all of this line so far. One last chance to show you guys, and we're going to bring back in the cartoons for Triceraton. So you can kind of see, like, there is obviously a quite a substantial difference, really, between the two types of characters. While they are still both Triceraton, sure... Obviously, this one's very heavily influenced by the animation style. This one's very heavily influenced by the Mirage comic style. It's a good time to certainly be a turtle collector while you are maybe perhaps only collecting the cartoon or you're only perhaps collecting the comic turtles. Gotta got say, there's some really great stuff coming with us from the folks over at NECA Toys. This is, I think, the chance that they've really been able to shine. Their artists, their talented sculptors, and their talented painters have all come to the forefront here, producing some fantastic-looking figures. Not to mention, of course, the one that we looked at in this review, Triceraton Zog. Just for the record, though, cheatedly is not really a word. Although, according to Webster's Dictionary, cheatingly is, in fact, an adverb, and it means in a cheating manner. So I suppose based on that, I cheatingly swapped out the hands for Zog prior to hitting the record button. Boy, we can put that one to rest now. We'll be, speaking of putting things to rest, be looking forward to putting this guy to rest on my shelf, along with the rest of the turtle figures that we've been looking at so far. There's a lot of stuff that's gone into the look of this figure, both with, again, the sculpting, the paintwork, and, again, the accessories. The accessories aren't admittingly as much as perhaps the other turtles. I think we were a little bit spoiled by the loss in turtles equally spoiled i think with master splinter that just by virtue of comparison zog got a little less of that he does at least get a triceraton blaster that's good he gets himself also a knife which i might very well have displayed with both the hands i mean he has obviously two hands why not just have him wielding two weapons two accessories and of course the figure has one other accessory the crucial accessory the one that you need the most is of course the tail attaches onto the body not only just from an aesthetic standpoint but it also helps to stabilize the figure as there is a quite a bit a lot of plan Plastic that went into this piece. What do you guys think of Triceraton Zog? Is this a figure you could see yourselves picking up? And maybe also as a video question, considering we use the word, I use the word, cheatedly, what's a word that you use that you know is not a word, yet you use it anyways? And even if you have friends that correct you regularly, that dude, that's not a word. You still use it just to annoy them. 
What's that word? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys. I would that did provide the sample of the brand new Mirage Comics Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Triceraton Zog. If you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing, and you certainly, certainly do want to stick around for more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. What's that? Sorry, what? You've got some more time on your hands before you have to rush along? Well then, popping up at the very end of this video will be a playlist of all the other teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if I can get that all out. Produced, of course, by the folks over at NECA Toys. Feel free to give that a gander, if now you've already admitted that you have a little bit of time on your hands. Certainly, I hope as well, if you guys all are willing to come back, we are going to, of course, be looking at some more TMNT stuff, if that's the kind of thing that you like to check out. Uh, of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.